My void will consume you, if you ask nicely. Your will is no longer your own. Stay away from them. To us! For the Horde! You have let the Horde to place without honor. Your petty quarrels only make me stronger. Our world needs us, Jump. You got you all be We cannot let the world fall to darkness. We're already lost. Put your faith in the light, and all is possible. Is it truly righteousness that drives you? I wonder. It is you who have guessed. This is the Whispers of Wars. Hello everyone and welcome to Whispers of War, show number 77. I'm your host Sil and if I sound a little bit um, off, it's because I have a very blocked nose. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm a little bit sick. I don't think it's anything serious with what's going on with the coronavirus. Um, I just think it's cold, which I always get around this time of year. Um, I, I guess it did not help. Okay, backstory. Um, I went to the Harry Potter uh, studios, the studio tour uh, in Watford this weekend. Hence why also my gaming time has been a little bit like shortened. But um, there's a lot of people there and I have a suspicion that... Um, uh, with the, the lack of sleep uh, of being in a hotel that had a wedding party next door uh, until the very early morning. So lack of sleep and just, you know, winter and already probably suffering a little bit from a, a tiny cold and then being in the space with a lot of people, um, I think I probably caught a bug. I don't think it's anything serious. I honestly don't because I'm not coughing. I don't feel like death. I just, I just sound shit. <laughs> um, so, yeah. But... Other than that, the, the, I can. If you're a Harry Potter fan, or even if you just appreciate the movies, I think that tour was amazing. It was, um, I it was more walking than I expected. I thought we would be done in like two or three hours, but we actually were there for six and a half hours. Um, I spent far too much money on stuff, but I, I love Harry Potter. I'm surprised I'm not even doing a Harry Potter podcast. But next to World of Warcraft, that's my other like guilty pleasure. Um, I love everything Harry Potter. I love the, the whole world creation and everything about it. So I had to buy a lot of shit. Um, <laughs> yeah, spent far too much money. But yeah, it was an amazing time. I think seeing the props and the sets and just the whole way of how a movie gets created is amazing. Um, just seeing how much work goes into it is, uh, yeah, it's pretty awing at times, but it was great. So if you ever have the chance to go there, then I definitely recommend it. It is a lot of fun. Um, the butter beer is amazing. I like it. If you like cream soda, I think you'll like this as well. My boyfriend didn't like it, which is fine because I gladly sacrificed myself to, uh, to have his. Um, <laughs> uh, food is very expensive but like with anything you know anything like such a public thing if you, if you would go to your Disney or something I always think food is overpriced but that's that's just what it is ho-hum you know you, you, it's it's a day out um, so yeah not a lot of wow time let's, let's roll it back to World of Warcraft um, I did do a few things before I went away and um, I still level a little bit of my alts like I want to level my Worgen Rogue to um I think about level 70 at least uh, before I, I, I get to uh, other content just because I don't mind doing the like Burning Crusade stuff and, and Wrath of the Lich King. It's after that that I'm a little bit like mm, I wouldn't mind having um, just access to Pandaria now. So I think I'll, I'll push him a little bit until I'm, I'm at around level 70 and then I'll wait for Shadowlands. Um, I really want to focus on my Draenei um, Paladin and I think like many people I've debated if I should switch classes with, with the intro of Shadowlands. Now the problem for me is, and I know this is going to sound like all my, my, my train of thoughts are always a little bit silly because I always base them on 
like RP reasons and not really gameplay reasons. Um, so I wanted to switch from a rogue to a paladin just because I feel like paladin has a bit more options. Um, I've played druid for years and as much as I do like druids, I am not a fan of heal over time. Uh, so if, if I have to play a healer, I don't know if I want to go back to Druid. Um, Druid tanking I used to love, not so much anymore. But I've heard that Paladin is quite cool with the Avenger shield and everything like that. And I've done that in the past and I did enjoy it. Just never healed on a Paladin, so I might have to see if, uh, if it's any fun. But for now, I was thinking switching from a Rogue to Paladin. The only problem I have is aesthetics and let me explain to you what I mean with that so you know how I often ask a guest so when you're going to get into Shadowlands which covenant are you picking and why like a lot of time people will say I'm picking this and this um, uh, uh, like the vent or I'm, I'm picking Kyrians because it suits my character or because I like the looks of that uh, covenant. I'm in the same boat. So I don't really go for, oh, this will be the best for raiding or this will be the best for PvP. Um, you know, even though Blizzard has said we are going to um, just make an, a, a, like an aesthetic thing, I guess. I don't know if there will be some proper min-maxing going on with that. We never know. Um, and I really like you know 90% of the population wanted to go with the vent here and I just can't see a paladin do that I think my paladin would have a hard time there unless I RP her very dark and it just doesn't suit my Draenei and I'm, I'm probably playing it very black and white in that point of view but it just doesn't feel right um, whereas if I would play on my rogue it would Absolutely, like 100%. Um, I could almost play any class except a priest or a normal priest, so not a shadow priest. And a, um, a, a paladin, I, I just don't know. It just doesn't It doesn't feel like they could go with the vent there. Um, I don't know. I, I need to think about that. So yeah, I was, I was really debating going paladin. I haven't uh, excluded it yet, ruled it out. I am still thinking maybe I want to go Paladin unless they do something with rogues because as much as I am enjoying um, subtlety it's still my preferred spec even though I switched to assassin for raiding I don't I don't know I, I just don't feel like they are versatile which is stupid I know it because it, it's just a pure DPS class but sometimes I miss doing something else with it um, I love all the little tricks that rogues have, like the vanish and everything. I, I absolutely adore playing a rogue, but I do sometimes miss the options that you could do something else. Or, I, you know, I just have to do what I always do and just level two characters simultaneously <laughs> and do something like that. Um, yeah, so that's been occupying my, my mind as of late, and that's also why I'm leveling the paladin, just because I want to have that, that option when Shadowlands hits. And let's face it, it's not going to be for a while. I really don't think it's going to be for a while. So that's what I've been doing. Um, what else uh, in game? Not much. I'm really looking forward to the book coming out because I want to read some more lore. Um, and then I had a really, really cool interview last week before I went away on holiday. Hence why the show is a little bit late. Not because of the interview, but because of my holiday. Um, I did want to bring it out today. Uh, but yes, I, I was very, very, very overwhelmed with uh, with my guest. She's amazing. And it was the lovely Hazel from Hazel Nutty Games. Um, so that's an interview I'm going to treat you to in a second. Now, I just want to apologize for my, uh, my bumbling at times. I was very starstruck <laughs> and, uh, and um, I was gushing. And sometimes I listened back to myself and I thought, oh, so the hell what the hell what are you doing so yes my apologies if sometimes I sound like a idiot <laughs> it's just you know like I said I was really humbled by having uh, Hazel on, on the show 
However, enough apologies for my bumbling. Um, I hope you enjoyed the interview. I loved talking to Hazel. And I hope you enjoyed the interview as well. And I'll come back with some uh, questions I asked on Twitter. And that you all answered, of course. So, yeah, I'll see you on the flip side. And with me today, I'm being joined by a brand new voice. Uh, someone I look up to, if I'm really, really honest. And I'm very, very honored that she is a guest. Welcome, Hazel. Hi. I'm Hazel. Hello. Thank you so much <laughs> for having me on today. It's, I'm so happy that you you have time to be on the show because I think a lot of people know that you're very, very busy. <laughs> if it works <laughs> like that, I'm, I'm doing something right. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, for those people who are living under the rock and have no idea who you are, can you say a little bit about who is Hazel and what does Hazel do on the interwebs? Oh, um, I'm... Hazel is... I believe the, the cool kid term is a content creator, so I split my time between YouTube and Twitch. On YouTube we do uh, a lot of guide videos as well as a weekly news update, and then on Twitch it's um, short streams every day where I'm, I'm mostly just doing casual, the things I would do anyways in WoW while catching up with everybody about life and whatever's going on and talking about what's coming up in WoW. So mm -hmm. lots, of, uh, lots of dailies, lots of farming, lots of uh, mount pet farming, that kind of thing, but a overall relaxed and we try to keep it a positive time Nine that's days always time together <laughs> well i think we always you know there's always some period that someone will have an off day or something happens that it's, it's a little bit not as happy and positive as it can be but i mm. think that is that is the general thing that a lot of people are trying to go for i think at this period in time with the game um what made you get into doing podcasts or sorry doing um youtubes and and streaming and all those things what made you want to do that so i started about i guess it's about seven years ago now it was 2013 and i had just moved from canada to the united states and i was living legally don't worry but i didn't have my work <laughs> visa i wasn't legally allowed to go get a job and i was very 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 bored and really needed a project something to kind of keep my mind busy and uh and i decided that i looked up a lot to a lot of wow youtubers i decided it looked like fun i wanted to give it a try and uh and started making videos way back then just to have something to do mm. and and we're all so happy that you did <laughs> what was it that that you think um got you so popular with with um the youtubers and and, and people who watch your your videos i will I know never it's know. a very <laughs> that's a very difficult understand. question to ask <laughs> Um, I think that something that helped me get, get off the ground on YouTube was that I didn't start with wide wow videos. I started with uh, Pet Paddle Guides, which is more of a mm -hmm. niche audience. So with something like that, it's easier to get your videos ranked in search than if I was to start off just uh, talking about like the major news of the day. Mm -hmm. So I think that got me off the ground a little bit. But um, these days I have absolutely no idea. I, <laughs> whenever I'm streaming, I cannot have a viewer count up because it will just freak me out. I never look. Absolutely. Oh, really? Not. No, I can't do it. I, I, in my, in my mind, it's just me and like, you know, fifteen of us or so, and we're just kind of hanging out, you know, playing games in like a big house in my brain, and that's about all I can manage. Oh, I like it. That's actually a really nice way of, of looking at it, um, because it also shows that you're not really looking at the numbers, which I think is refreshing for, especially when, when you know, because um, I know that you streamed on YouTube, and now you're streaming on Twitch, aren't you? Mm -hmm. um, that so many people on Twitch do it for the numbers, so it's really nice to hear that it's actually really refreshing. Yeah, and it goes both ways, you know, if you have a day where you have good numbers, that can kind of freak you out, and you have a day where you have off numbers, and that can kind of freak you out, mm. and because streaming, I think, is such a personal thing, either one of those outcomes is not helping you at all, it's not doing anything <laughs> good for the content that you're actually there to make, so it's just easier to not look and just try to have the best day that you were ever going to have. That's good advice. I think that's really good advice. Okay, well, Hazel, let's jump into to World of Warcraft and your history with it. So, are you Horde or Alliance? For the Alliance, I have my <laughs> my Alliance shirt on right now, and that's not okay. saying much because I think a good third of my wardrobe has not just WoW merch but Alliance logo specifically. <laughs> I like blue. It works. Oh, that that's a fair. Was it just the blue color, or was there something specific pulling you to Alliance? No, I've, I've actually, I've played both factions over the years. I think during MOP I was more Horde and Cat I was more Alliance, but um, end of MOP Warlords, I got into my current guild 
and they just happen to be alliance anyways, so I've sort of stuck with the faction because I continue to raid with the same people. But mm -hmm. I'm happy about it because I like I like the um, I like Stormwind a lot better than Orgrimmar. I don't I don't care for Orgrimmar, and you know Undercity's very dark and it has elevators, and Stormwind has boats and and you can fish and it's got a garden <laughs> and I mean, Stormwind's great until you go there in horrific vision. That's a different story, but for the most part, <laughs> I like the cities. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> How do you feel also about lax gnomes, which is a serious oh. issue? Very, very true. Did you kind of like hope that maybe there would be something like um, a neutral faction in the future to, to get like the gnomes on the horde side and vice versa, like other races on, on the alliance side? Or are you very much like, nah, I'm quite happy with how it is? Mm -hmm. Leading up to the BFA, or pardon me, leading up to the Shadowlands announcement, I was one of the people that was really hoping they were going to, in the wake of BFA, dissolve factions in some way. Not necessarily mm -hmm. like completely delete them, but what I wanted was for kind of a splintering where instead of just two factions, we have more, almost like covenants, but then they don't matter as much gameplay wise. So you would be able to raid with anybody from any faction and you'd be able to um, like PvP and, and Q Arena with anybody from any faction. But then when it came to world PvP, you would be split up into even more groups. That was kind of my dream because I really like the player agency that you get from being able to choose your race independently of who you want to align your character with. And that mm -hmm. would have allowed for some really cool, like if, you know, imagine if a druid could actually join the Cenarian Circle, you know, instead of, I'm, I'm sure there are some Tauran druids that are still upset about the whole tree thing and that would prefer to be able to just step right out of that one altogether. Mm -hmm. So um, I kind of wanted that because I also, um, as an Alliance player, am very jealous of Undead. I've been really crossing my fingers for some Alliance Undead for a while. And yeah. That would have solved that issue, but it was not to be. Mm. Do you think that might still come with the whole, you know, because Shadowlands and it's all the, the, the basically the expansion about death. And then we have the, the things that are leading up to with the whole... How how are they described again? You'd probably know better than me. The um, not the light force. Yeah, yeah. The um, the, the undead that were raised by, um, like Kalia. Oh, the yeah, the light forged undead or what? I, I I'm not sure yeah. if that's the exact term, but that's what something I something like that. <laughs> my hopes are pinned on them. <laughs> it would be really cool if we. I mean, we are we're getting so many little handouts that you're starting to think. But why is that? And why why would we not? get them on that side with wouldn't it make sense especially with you know a book like before the storm when it almost felt like we were going to get like undead on the alliance side mm -hmm. it feels like there's something to come hope so <laughs> <laughs> okay who would you say is your main nowadays or maybe even uh, are you going to switch when you go to shadowlands but who is your main at this point in time I am a gnome shadow priest in my heart. That's who I do my heroic rating on. Um, mm -hmm. I've played her since since end of mop, and uh, I definitely definitely the gnome. Although lately I've been spending a bunch a bunch of time on stream playing this cult here in guardian druid that I made just to do like stream raids and whatnot. And tanking has been really fun. I'm enjoying mm -hmm. bear a lot more than I thought I would. But switching mains is something that I have time and again thought that I would do because it sounds fun and then once I go to do it I'm like no 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 this this isn't me this isn't right and I back out of it every single time <laughs> so does that I mean that you, st though. you start with with someone at the beginning of the expansion and then you're like no actually no no let's go back <laughs> this, this yeah. isn't right I thought at the beginning of BFA that I was going to switch, um, not away from Shadow Priest, but just from a gnome to a Void Elf Shadow Priest. I was very mm -hmm. excited about Void Elves when they came out. I dyed my hair and everything, but then I tried it <laughs> and I was just too tall, man. It's just <laughs> how, how are you finding that? Because I, um, for me, it's, it's the other way around, which is, you know, I don't hate on gnomes. I just want to get that straight. <laughs> but I always feel like with outfits and stuff that it's, you know, the like nice robes, especially with priests or mages, the, it gets a bit squashed and oh, I feel like you can't yeah. do you feel that same way at times that you're like I wish they would be a bit more detailed on gnomes or it would be well I think we get about as much detail as you're ever going to get and after having looked at a gnome for long enough you do kind of get used to it I think mm -hmm. the thing for me is as a shadow priest I am a I'm a purple cloud anyways I, <laughs> I'm, I never really see that much detail in my character it's more about the architecture of the uh, the shoulders and the helmet so mm -hmm. beyond that, it doesn't really matter all that much. I think if I played like a major warlock, I would want to be a taller race so that I could see the transmog better. Ah, uh, yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. 
<laughs> okay, how are you finding tanking? Because that's that's quite a stressful thing to to switch from shadow priesting to tanking. It's I think the difficult part of tanking for me is less about the actual mechanics of it, which are easier than expected. And mind you, I'm only writing normal. I'm not I'm not cutting okay. edge here, but. Um, the mechanics are fine, it's the social aspect of it. I don't know that I'm naturally given to leadership, and that's something that I'm trying to develop a little bit and try to t try to get used to, you know, giving directions and deciding what packs to pull and how fast are we going to go and, you know, when to hand out battle reses and ask for bloodlust and all that. And that's something that doesn't come naturally to me, so I'm working on trying to, trying to lead a little bit, which I think is naturally more of a tank role in an instance, and I think that's definitely been the hardest part. But once you're actually doing the fight and you've, you've kind of gotten the whole thing running, I've noticed that as a tank, you, you kind of just sort of sit there and you're pressing a couple buttons and then you taunt when it's your turn. <laughs> and that's, you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't do all that much. It's not that complicated. I thought it was okay. going to be a lot harder. <laughs> so not, you know, anyone who thinks about tanking, just your advice would be just give it a go. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's uh, it's it's surprisingly empowering, especially um, because if you're trying tanking, chances are you're going to try leveling a tank and tanking in lower level dungeons first, which is what I recommend. Mm -hmm. And if you've been, you know, DPSing and healing those groups for so long, you're going to have a great time finally being the one with the power and the control and saying, <laughs> no, we're going this way. We're not getting lost. We're going to pull at this pace and uh, we're all going to we're all going to get through this together. It's very nice. That is really nice. Uh, well, who knows? Maybe we'll get loads more tanks now out there. I think uh, knowing with uh, looking for group, we might need them. <laughs> There's something to be said for playing every role a bit because mm -hmm. it gives you a better appreciation for what that role brings and how you can be better at your chosen role. I don't think I would main switch to tank, but having spent some time tanking and having spent some time healing, I think that makes me a better DPS because I'm more aware of what... Uh, you know, you know, like a healer's favorite DPS or a tank's favorite DPS, you get a better feel for what people mm -hmm. want from you, and uh, you're better able to provide that once you've kind of seen the equation from three sides. Yeah, no, I think that that is, um, I think you're really, really hitting the mark there with that, because I think a lot of people are so focused on their own role that they forget that, you know, um, what was it with classic, not classic, but in vanilla that they always said, you need to give the tank three sunders before you start DPSing. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of people are like, why, why, I don't get it. And just, you know, and then once you start playing a tank, I guess a lot of things make sense then all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the same for healers with um, <laughs> the line of sight issues. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that that's good advice, and um, I think, especially now with the with the law that we're experiencing, it might be interesting for people to switch up their roles a little bit just to uh, see the other side. It's also a great excuse to level more alts, and we have all these beautiful allied races to play with. Very true, very true. <laughs> right, Hazel, take us back to the beginning. Um, how did you get into World of Warcraft, and and when did you have that point that you're like? This is now the game for me. I love this, and it will be my game forever. <laughs> That's a, that was a big commitment. So, <laughs> where is 2000 and I want to say eight, 2008, something <laughs> like that. Um, I was the tender age of 16. I was in high school, and all of my high school friends would do nothing but talk about World of Warcraft. We would be <laughs> at our locker break. We would be at lunchtime and after school, and they would just stand around in a circle and talk about their WoW raids. And that is the most excruciatingly dull thing when you don't play. Mm -hmm. So I got tired of being left out and I wanted to understand what on earth they were talking about. So I picked up a copy of the game and then uh, and then it turned out to be incredibly engaging. And also, you know, in high school as a teenager, it's not uncommon to want a place that you can kind of escape to that you feel like you have more control over. So WoW mm -hmm. kind of became that place for me to uh, to kind of decompress and have something that was just mine. And no matter where I went in life and what happened, I would still be able to log back in and my character was right where I left them. So I uh, started back then and I actually have not... All of the friends I started with, they've long, long, long since quit. But I've never <laughs> I've never managed to take a break. It's just always wow. there. <laughs> That's some commitment. Did you also start with a, with, um, a priest back then? I I played a lot of I didn't actually end up settling on a main until Mop. I jumped characters wow. probably every three months for the first half of my WoW career. I was a horrible alcoholic, 
Um, I typically switched between priest and hunter, though. But I was a I was a healing priest back in those days. Mm -hmm. Okay. What was it that that the priest class just pulled you in, and, and you're like, okay, that was the class then for me. I think originally, when you're new to the game and you are like a big concern for a lot of new players, is what can I do that's going to be helpful to other people? How can I get into groups? And at the time, there was just there everybody needed healers. So I figured if I was a holy priest, then I would be able to get into groups, and people would have some need for me, and I'd be able to help. And Priest just seemed like the most kind of straightforward, very classic RPG version of an MMO healer. So that's what I started with, because it just mm -hmm. felt like a good place to good place to be. I didn't really mess with Shadow much until much later. Okay, I've I've also heard because I have not played Shadow Priest that Shadow has changed a lot over the years as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've gone through quite a few iterations from uh, the there was the uh, the crazy dot weaving days of warlords, and you had your shadow orbs you were managing, and then we had our beautiful, beautiful, beautiful surrender to madness patch where it was just the best way to live in Emerald Nightmare. <laughs> Glorious days, <laughs> and uh, and we've we've settled down now to somewhere that's a little bit more sane and manageable. But shadow, I think for me. And even just the game in general, I enjoy the gameplay of any given class, but for me, that's more just the backdrop from which you see everything else. I'm never really going to be turned on or off overly much by how a class's mechanics actually work together. I've never been terribly bored or excited by any given combat class. For me, it's okay. more about this is these are the tools that I'm going to use to get through the challenges of the game. What is the aesthetic? What is the... What is the vision of this character? What kind of vibe do they have, for lack of a better word? Mm -hmm. You know, what, what's the feel of this character and what makes sense for that? And then um, I just kind of like Shadow because I've been playing it for so long, I feel more comfortable on it. And we tend yeah. to both like and be better at the things we spend more time with. So it's not that I necessarily enjoy the mechanics of it any more than anything else, but it's just kind of comfy. Also, um, big Lovecraft fan, so the, all the, uh, the insanity aesthetics of it are really cool. Uh, I think, yeah, there's a lot of Lovecraft references <laughs> this time around. Mm -hmm. Are you hoping for something like that in the future that we get another sort of like nod to certain, um, wouldn't say, well, maybe I would say cults, like icons or, or anything like with literature or movies or like, I hope that we're touching a little bit on that. I think that um, we've probably seen the end of the Lovecraft stuff in BFA because they went very far into that with the old gods mm. and with the Zoth. But um, I would really love, something I have my fingers kind of crossed for, is a return of the original, you know, pre-Twilight vampire aesthetic. I think that the mm. pop culture world in general is ready for it. They tried with the Dracula series. I don't think they quite made it there, but um, I, I liked reading classic novels as a kid. And the original Bram Stoker Dracula is just such a cool novel in how slow, but also creepy it is. And I have been wanting a blood mage class for a long time. We have a lot of examples of characters in the game that kind of work with that. And originally Shadow Priest had a lot more of those vampiric influences, and then when they changed it to insanity, they kind of stripped away a lot of the blood magic and vampire stuff and replaced it with the insanity and the old god stuff. And mm -hmm. I want to see those blood-based mechanics um, resurface in a new class if I if I if I had to if I had to uh, wish for something. I would I would love to see some kind of a, a sand lane, uh, either race or class or something. That would be really cool. And, you know, I, I don't think it's like something to ask for too much, considering with Shadowlands and we're, we're getting something that is, I would almost say a bit vampire-esque with, with the vent there. And, Very and, gothic, yeah. Yeah. Um, are, so are you a big fan of, like, um, gothic -y horror? Uh, so... I'm a, a, a big scaredy cat. <laughs> I can't, <laughs> I love reading horror up to an extent, but I cannot watch it. I, uh, I have the, the nerves of, 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 a, of a cat <laughs> and not a straight, not a brave cat. So, um, so no, I can't, I can't, I don't, I don't <laughs> like watching horror at all. I like the aesthetics and the themes and the stories. Mm -hmm. I will, I'm the person that will go look up horror films on Wikipedia to read the plot summary so that I know what happened without having to actually sit through all the jump scares. <laughs> and I thought I was the only one who did that. 
They've got interesting stories. I just don't want to sit through all of the all of the tense violins. I can't handle it. I have that, you know, I assume that's really true because as soon as you mute a horror movie, it starts to become less scary. Mm-hmm. And you're just like, oh, you're just waiting for that jump scare. But yeah, I, I have to admit, I, I do the same thing that I go on Wikipedia just to, okay, so just so I know what's going to happen and what it's about, okay, I won't be... Well, I'll still be scared with the jump scares, but it feels mm. like lessened a little bit. <laughs> okay, now I I approve the whole horror books um, uh, genre. That's really cool. Okay, when was that point in in Warcraft that you thought, wow, this is really such an amazing game, or you know that you got that moment that you started to fall in love with it a little bit? I I don't know if I ever had one moment. I think it's one of those things that's almost like a safety blanket just because it's mm-hmm. always been around in some way and then every year it just creeps a little bit bigger into my life until I'm sitting in a room surrounded by nothing but wow posters and plushies <laughs> with uh, with my whole life taken over. But I will mm-hmm. say I got really addicted in uh, Cataclysm. <laughs> I played so much wow in Cataclysm. That was, um, I started playing in Wrath but I like to think of Cat as my first true expansion because um, being new to WoW can be kind of rough. It's just got mm-hmm. so many things that you need to know. And it's such a social-based game that the game is not always kind to new players. And Kata mm-hmm. was when I first started to feel that I kind of had my feet under me and I was making choices for myself. And I played um, far too much WoW in those days. <laughs> I, I'm glad I graduated high school anyways, but it was a little sketchy. <laughs> Do you still feel like, because of that, that Kata could be one of your favorite expansions? Or are you a bit like, because a lot of people are always dissing on on Kata, um, which I sometimes feel is a little bit unfair on the game, really, with with how many changes we've had um, Mm -hmm. for the game in that time. It was a huge overhaul with everything. Um, But would you say, like, Kata is something that you're still very fond of? Or is it one that you're like, now I, I do feel like it's one of the weaker ones? Kata is... So I feel like everybody's going to have their own ranking and opinions of expansions that are pretty subjective. I think that it's very hard to just say, okay, this expansion is scientifically and objectively better or worse than any other one, because your experience Mm -hmm. of it is going to depend not only on what kind of features and gameplay is important to you, but also who you were and where you were in your life at the time that it came out. So my rankings match nobody else's because they come from me and my life and also because I have some unpopular opinions on expansions. <laughs> um, Kata for a long time was my number one expansion because it was such a golden time and it mm-hmm. implemented so many systems that I love so much. And I think Kata has actually been supplanted by BFA as my okay. number one favorite expansion, which I have found nobody that agrees with me. But um, I love BFA so very much that I think it's, I think it's taken that spot. Oh, wow. Well, can you, just because, you know, it, it's all about positivity and because from my environment, I hear a lot of people being really negative about BFA at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, what is it for you that makes this one of the better expansions? Because maybe people can, you know, get things out of that. They're like, actually, yeah, I haven't looked at it like that. There was just so much content in BFA that even if some pieces of it fell short, there was still so many other amazing things to keep busy with. And the backdrop of the whole thing I thought was so gorgeous and so realistic and immersive that I really enjoyed it. So um, as an example of a thing I didn't like about BFA, um, I don't really care for war fronts. I don't find them very fun or engaging to play, but that's fine because there's also world quests and reputations and crafting and pet farming and mount farming and the raids and island expeditions and Mm -hmm. all of these things happening on a, a story backdrop that I've, that's finally gotten me interested for the first time in WoW. I've never been much of a lore person, but I'm finally like excited for cutscenes and looking forward to the new book. The environments and the landscapes are gorgeous. I love that Kul Tiras feels like a real place that has like real people and real animals. And obviously they're not real, but it feels like a place that I've been before. Mm-hmm. And it feels like a place that you can really get lost in. And I think part of this ties, part of my opinion ties back to what I said before about the mechanics of my class not being fundamental for me to enjoy the game. Like, I don't think I liked Azerite Armor any better than anybody else, but yeah. it, it doesn't really ruin my day. I just kind of get what I need to get, and then I use that, and then I go back to doing the things that I really like, whatever they happen to be. If anything, I think BFA had a little too much to do. There, there was <laughs> especially 8.2, and then now with 8.3, there was just so much 
content to do, particularly if you're a collector and you don't want to miss out on any pets or mounts or anything. Mm -hmm. um, there's so much to do that it can be a little overwhelming, especially if you want to also try to play alts. Yeah, um, I, I think for a lot of people that has... Um, I hear people moaning about that. <laughs> mm -hmm. I have to admit, unfortunately. Okay, but you're very true. I mean, I'd rather have too much to do than, I guess, not enough. I think, um, I think islands in particular are something that got kind of forgotten a little bit, um, but I think they did such a good job, especially now with 8.3 and the Dublin vendor. I feel like it has a really good rate of rewards that you can get both randomly if you get lucky, and now you can kind of work towards the things that you want. And these days with all of our wacky corruptions and our crazy powerful essences, it is so satisfying to just round up half an island and then dance around just madly trying to avoid all the AoEs <laughs> while you just rinse everything down with crazy numbers. It's so fun and you can rinse through them so quickly. Um, I never really did them to grind Azerite because I always figured with the catch up mechanics, I'll just get Azerite whenever I get it and it'll be mm -hmm. fine, which is largely proven to be true. But um, it's just a fun thing to do for for the mounts and pets and transmog and whatnot. That's really good. Yeah, I, I have to admit that I didn't do many of the, the islands until I heard that some some um, good essences drop from it. So I thought, mm -hmm. oh, I, I guess I have to do them now. And it's actually a lot of fun when you start doing them, especially when you have some better gear. It starts mm -hmm. to become easier and easier and easier and you don't feel like you're dying constantly. So yeah, yeah, I, I think definitely islands is something that um, people might not have tried that could be really interesting now with this new patch. Okay, let, let's go back like even further because you said that you started in Raft, didn't you? How how was <laughs> how was classic for you uh, when that came out? Was that something that you're like, oh, I'm really curious to see how the questing was be with with um, some of the changes that we've had, or or are you like, you know, a classic such a time uh, consuming thing? I'm not <laughs> even touching it. <laughs> um. So Wrath was like the, the quest overhaul came in Cataclysm. So I did have mm -hmm. some memories of playing on the old questing system, but they were very, very old. So I was kind <laughs> of interested to check it out just from a nostalgia point of view, but I recognize, like you said, it's a big time investment. And I love retail so much and so much my content centers around retail that I didn't see myself realistically playing both. So originally I was going to skip it. I was going to just kind of, you know, because you get it with your sub fee, so it's not like I had yeah. to make a choice as to whether to buy it. I figured I would just check it out later whenever I felt like it. But then um, I was streaming retail, and the experience of streaming retail when Classic first came out was just an exercise in how many times can you explain why you're not playing Classic right now? <laughs> I figured I would just uh, uh, hop on the bandwagon and try it out a little bit more, and I had more fun than I expected. Mm -hmm. I always had this image in my head that Classic was going to be incredibly grindy in a way that was kind of soul draining and that I didn't see the point of like trying to get set up for endgame when it was such a time investment process when the endgame is theoretically limited. So I didn't really get it, but then when I actually, you know, got my character created and was running around, I found that um, grindy pace actually kind of charming because I knew I was never, I didn't really think I was ever going to make it to 60 or like get into a molten core group. So instead mm -hmm. for me, I was just excited about trying to find my next cooking recipe or what kind of fish can I get here? And it, does anybody want to buy my fish? And that <laughs> slower pace and kind of lack of overall goal, I think made classic a lot more relaxing the way that retail hasn't been because in retail there's, you log on and there's 14 different things that you could do that would be good for your character. And that can be a little stressful sometimes. So mm. it was nice, but it's like you said, just way too much time for me. And I felt like I kind of needed to pick one and it wasn't much of a choice. Yeah, it, it's in a way, I guess, a bit of a shame that you can't, you really have to choose either I'm going to spend my time in BFA or I'm spending my time in, uh, in Classic now because mm. it's just, I don't know how people do it, especially now that we're 15 years like along the line and I'm like, I'm supposed to be like a functioning adult now. I have no idea <laughs> yeah. where I put this time in. We're all older now. Good yeah, job. unfortunately. <laughs> oh yeah, all the responsibilities. Okay. So let's let's now go back to the future. Um, how you know? I don't know if you were at this point. Uh, I can't remember if you were present last year. But what were your feelings and thoughts when they announced? Shadowlands and I think it wasn't much of a surprise for the community anymore mm -hmm. but how did you feel when they actually acknowledged that that was going to be the expansion? 
So I was at BlizzCon. I okay. saw the announcement. I was front row. I got there real early. <laughs> um, I I actually had avoided the leaks. I know that Shadowlands, the Shadowlands announcement was heavily leaked um, mm. leading up to the expansion. And when you look back, actually, a lot of the leaks are mostly inaccurate. There was a few good ones like right before, but a lot of them weren't all that true. Mm -hmm. But I kind of avoided them leading up to that because I figure it's not gonna it's not gonna do me any good, and it's not like we know we knew at that time whether or not they were true. I recorded a whole video actually reacting to those supposed leaks, and then just threw it out because I was being really snarky about these potential leaks that I didn't believe in. But then I was like, "Ooh, this is gonna look really bad if it turns out these are all true." <laughs> so I just yeah you know, deleted that one. But um, Shadowlands, when it was announced, I was excited, but I didn't really. Like, when we first learned about it, um, and mm -hmm. I think the experience, especially on the floor, you're kind of blown away by the cinematic because the experience of watching that on the big screen with everybody is incredible. Mm -hmm. And then after that, they're just firing features at you real fast. And, I'm, and I'm, I'm trying to keep up, but the things that really stick out, usually you walk away from that presentation, they told you 24 things and you remember like four of them, and then you go look up the rest of them on the broadcast later. But the, uh, the things that really stuck out to me were the character customization, and then they really hammered in how central the covenants are going to be. So I was excited, but I think, I don't know if there was anything else they could have shown me that would have made me more excited. I'm just always happy for new content. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like it's been, because uh, I've, I've asked it to, to other guests, uh, and that could be my own little like snarky self coming out now and again. Like it's been so quiet since BlizzCon with um mm -hmm. you know I, we might have one or two leaks that were like a little bit unintentional and most of it is just on the blizzard from very quiet when it comes to shadowlands um mm -hmm. how how do you experience that with the whole fact that they are saying okay we're bringing we're trying to release it uh at the end of the year at least yeah. um you know and and i've been a bit i'm not that i've been bitten by it but i'm like well it, they need to push it if, if it's not ready, but I, I just get a bit of a feeling like, you know, okay, Alpha's been announced at some point. Are we getting anything or is it it's just so quiet? <laughs> I feel like every single week, everybody's just kind of holding their breath. Ever since they started doing those um, encrypted Alpha builds, every mm -hmm. week all the, all the content creators are just on Twitter and they're like streaming like Shadowlands Alpha waiting room and then every week just nothing. And... Uh, <laughs> It's starting to be a question of everybody's estimates, I think, just keep getting pushed back and back and back. And people that thought we were going to get a summer release are starting to feel kind of sad. Um, it's just, it's hard to really ju judge when they're going to come out with it because it's possible, I don't know about likely, but it's possible that the reason they're keeping the alpha under wraps for so long is just because they want to get farther along before they unleash it. So maybe they whip it out and it's like almost done and they can get it out early, but I have very, very strong doubts that that's going to be the case. Mm -hmm. I'm not overly concerned about it just because I have enough things to keep me busy for a long <laughs> time, both in-game and in life. I am not really desperate for new content yet, so I'm fine, but I understand how a lot of people that are just playing the game, if they maybe don't have alts, are going to be done with BFA long before Shadowlands comes out. I think that's mm -hmm. going to be the reality for a lot of people, and I also think that's okay. I think it's a bit unrealistic to expect everybody to stay subbed and playing every single day for years and years on end. I think it's very normal to take breaks. It's very normal to spend some time with other games and, you know, go see your family once in a while and then just kind of have these um, these phases of playing more and phases of taking breaks whenever there's new content. I'm, I don't see a problem with that. Yeah, and I think, you know, that's, that's something I always tend to say when people go, like, oh, I'm really bored with World of Warcraft. I'm like, well... You don't have to, you know, it's not a job. Don't keep mm -hmm. playing it if you want to do something else because you're just going to hate your, your in-game time. Yeah. Try to go and play, like, I can I can say that I have, like, five different MMOs already installed on this machine, and it's not like I'm playing all of them, but, you know, I dabble now and again just also to get a, a different feel at times for MMOs. And I think when you play something else, it will also give you a little bit of appreciation when you come back to, to Warcraft, which is... I think for playing it for so many years, quite a comfortable, it's like putting on an old pair of slippers, you know, it's it's mm -hmm. very comfortable and, and you know, and you know, you, you showed on your channel that you've, you've been playing um, Black Desert online for mm -hmm. a little bit. Does that make you feel uh, when you play a different MMO that is, um, let's face it, has a lot of customization and is somewhat of a different beast uh, in what yeah. it does than, than World of Warcraft. Does that make you look at Warcraft a, a bit different or 
I think so. The, the reason I like BDO so much as kind of an off-season MMO for WoW is because, aside from the lack of sub fee, like you said, it's a very different beast. It has different gameplay, the combat feels different, the character customization is just a world apart, and all of the systems, it doesn't feel like a WoW clone, it feels like it's doing its own thing. I don't want to play WoW again, I have WoW. I want, <laughs> I want other things that will kind of, you know, scratch other itches in my brain in between. And I do think that playing playing something that's not WoW for long enough will kind of make you reappreciate the things you really like about WoW, but also vice versa. I feel like a lot of MMOs these days make WoW's character customization look a little bit dated, and I'm hoping mm -hmm. that the new options they bring in Shadowlands are going to help mitigate that some, but as long as we're still on the same classic system of just options on a carousel, I don't think it's going to change that much. There's never going to be a world where they give us like a height slider or a weight slider or like a hair color and you're an RGB code. They're never going to do that for WoW. That would have to be a different game, so. Mm -hmm. but. Do you think they would do it more like, if they would have to have something like that, like perhaps um, like with Star Wars, um, the Old Republic, when you had like four preset um, body shapes mm -hmm. and that was about it where you could per race and then that was about all the customization I guess you could do on them, um, bar the face. Would you see something like that happening in the future of World of Warcraft, or do you really think like we'll never get like really different body types? I think the closest thing they're gonna do and possibly continue to do is keep adding allied races. They could have, mm -hmm. like, Kul Tirans are still humans. They're not really meaningfully different genetically that we know of. They've just been living on an island for a while. So they could have just put the Kul Tiran body types on regular humans, and they could have also given them those like thin ones that we also see around Boralus. And mm -hmm. they didn't do that. They made them a separate allied race with separate racials. So I think that between adding extra customization to the original races and just more allied races, they're still... I feel like they still want to keep a silhouette for each race, and that's become blurred a little bit as we've got so many now, but I feel like they wouldn't really give us body type options or height options within a given race it just doesn't feel very wow mm, okay okay um with the customizations because uh, that was something i actually completely had slipped my mind for until the last month i think uh, and i was like oh yeah that was one of the things that they did announce at um at blizzcon mm -hmm. what is one of the things that that you saw that you're really like oh i'm hoping that we're going to get something like that maybe I'm dying to see the rest of them is the thing. All the races that I played <laughs> didn't get shown off. I need to know ah. what they're doing with gnomes. Um, <laughs> the ones that I remember the most are the undead ones and the human ones. Like the extra human um, ethnicity faces were amazing. I'm really mm -hmm. happy about those. But I just, I need to know, I need to know. How have we not seen more by now? I'm so impatient. Uh, gnomes and like night elves. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think time, so much time has gone by that even I've started to forget some of the different options. Like, I know they showed trolls, but all I remember are the sand trolls. I think there was another thing. Oh, and they had like the wild hammer dwarf paint for dwarves. That was right. Yeah, that's true. I completely forgot about that as well. Oh, wow. It, it, yeah, it's it's going to be really interesting to see what, um, what we're going to get. Are you hoping also for some of the, um, the hairstyles that the mecha gnomes have that will go to the, the gnomes? I would be very happy, but I strongly doubt that they'll do it. Um, I think that races like Mecha Gnomes versus regular Gnomes or Lightforged Drenai versus regular Drenai are so similar to begin with that the hairstyles are one of the only ways they can really visually differentiate them and make it like special that you're playing a Lightforged or a Mecha Gnome. So mm -hmm. I don't see them giving those very cool hairstyles to original Gnomes because there's not all like, you know, you, you throw a Mecha Gnome in armor and aside from their their sleevelessness, there's not a whole lot to differentiate them. So I feel mm -hmm. like that while I want the hair, they're not going to give it to me. <laughs> uh, it would be cool if we would get, you know, different hairstyles for them. It would be really nice. I would um, be happy okay. with just a whole, like back in Cataclysm, there was one patch <laughs> that just added another like five or so hairstyles for almost everybody and then mixed and matched a lot of them between races. And I would be happy with that. Just give me a mega version. Give me like 15 new hairstyles for every single race, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Uh, just hire a few people, it'll be fine. <laughs> and I'll be so happy, it'll be good. That would be really cool. And, you know, can I just wish for, like, really great hairstyles on troll females and not just, mm -hmm. like, weird palm trees on my head or, yeah. you know, just, just a bit more, like, you know, nice hairstyles. It's one <laughs> of the be... only ways that I really dates itself. Like, you look at the goblin female hairstyles and you can see the 2011 just jumping right out of them. 
Mm -hmm. um, everything else in WoW is so specific to a fantasy universe, but I think that the hairstyles, and, and to some extent the dances, really kind of echo the trends of the time, and the fact that those don't really get updated means that some characters are going to end up looking more dated than they need to, um, just purely because of the hair. I think that makes a bigger difference than any other part of the customization. Yeah, absolutely. I'm with you on that. Well, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed we'll, we'll get, you know, pleasantly surprised, I hope. Um, okay, so let's just stay with Shadowlands for a little bit. Um, like you said, covenants were also uh, announced. Do you already have a covenant picked out for your uh, for your Shadow Priest? And if so, which one are you? That yeah. was percent <laughs> Done. I didn't even have to see the rest of them. I think they showed Venthyr very early and I was instantly sold. I didn't need to know what else there was. Done. You you do hear from a lot of people that they are so popular. What do you think makes the Venthyr so popular? It, they're the best one. <laughs> they no, they just have them. <laughs> I think that Night Fae are probably a second choice. There's a lot of people that are going to resonate with that aesthetic. But the mm -hmm. Venthyr just hammer in on this really ornate and beautiful and interesting aesthetic that you don't get a ton of in WoW otherwise. And I think mm -hmm. that oh, that's going to be popular with a lot of people. Mm. So, is it for you more aesthetics when it comes to um, the Covenants, or or would you be one of those people who would start min uh, maxing if, for instance, any of the other ones would be better yeah. for your class? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with aesthetics. I think that because they've tied combat abilities to aesthetic covenants, Blizzard now has a responsibility to balance them close enough that you're not shooting yourself in the foot by choosing the one that you like the look of. So my mm -hmm. plan is just to pick the one I like the look of, hope for the best, and usually when you're looking at these kind of differences between like, for example, racials is another example of that, like your your races, um, combat racials. The difference between being the perfect race and being a medium race is so small that if you're just having like a better day, you just have like a little bit more caffeine before your raid and you, you hit one more global, you're going to make up that difference anyways, it's not that big of a deal. So I would rather just play the thing that I'm going to like the look of, because that's that's also the thing that's going to survive hot fixes. Like if they come out with one of the covenants and it's overpowered and everybody chooses that one, they're going to feel silly when they inevitably fix that, because the goal is to have them be somewhat balanced, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, well, that's what we can hope for, at least. Um, I hope so. so. <laughs> I hope so, too, because, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm also very much on the aesthetics. Do you think um, if you have an army of alts uh, that you would pick different covenants depending on on class or race or or how do you pick them uh class i think i do have um a solid handful of alts i have i think about 12 to 14 at 120 now so mm -hmm. i'm gonna have more than enough to have every covenant covered and i think that i'll probably it really depends on how the systems of shadowlands treat alts if it's if it's an 8.3 thing where you just have to do everything completely over again at the same pace from scratch, then I'm probably just going to do one, maybe two, you know, do Venthyr and my Priest and then do Night Fae and one of my Druids and call it a day. But if I can reasonably see all of the content on a bunch of characters, then I would probably pick like four, you know, main alts of BFA so that I can see every angle of it um, to a reasonable extent. Do you think it should be more like how it was in... Because uh, I, I never heard people complain a lot about Legion when people were leveling their alts because of the class hall. Um, do you think it should be more like that? I I, I heard some complaining back then. <laughs> but yeah, the, um, okay. I, no, people, people seem to really enjoy leveling alts for class halls. And I think the nice thing about that was you could kind of engage in as much or as little of the class halls as you wanted to, depending on what you were trying to get out of them. And they were faster, like leveling characters was faster to do on alts. Mm -hmm. The thing I like more about Covenants is because it's not tied to your character's class, you get to choose which one that you like best so that if you don't end up getting through all of them, at least you get to choose to get through the ones that appeal to you the most. Okay. Well, I'm like I said, you said, I hope that leveling will be so much easier um, with the new uh, expansion around. Now, they have said that leveling is going to be a lot quicker as well. Um, I think we're all starting from level was it 10 something equivalent like that uh, when you're you can go to all the other zones or yeah that's how much yeah i i, I like i can't remember that much anymore from the announcement <laughs> it was um, a long time ago I, I know it feels like so long <laughs> mm. um do you feel like um 
when it comes to leveling again in Shadowlands, you know, you, you've leveled your main uh, and, and maybe your main alts uh, to max level. You want to play something new. Do you uh, think you would, hypothetically speaking, if you would create a character, do you have like a certain expansion that you're like, okay, I'm going to go to this expansion now and that's all I'm playing? Or are you like, no, I'm just whatever? Um, or, or do you have a set out plan? I think probably... So the two areas that I'm most interested in are Cataclysm is the first one because I just really love the Cata leveling zones. They were mm -hmm. designed from the outset to be compatible with flying, which is really nice. And I've just done them so many times now that I'm faster at them. And I feel like the most efficient questing zone is the one that you're familiar with because you know where all the things are and all the, you know, all the icky quests to avoid and all that. So probably mm -hmm. Cataclysm, but I'm also really interested to see what it's like to level through Warlords because the Draenor questing experience was phenomenal. And the zones are really gorgeous, but these days, whenever I'm leveling through that level bracket, I just hop around collecting treasures for an hour and I'm done. Um, <laughs> Draenor takes barely any time, so I haven't done the quests in a while. I think those are the two that I'm going to focus on. Okay. Do you think that also depends um, on which classes or which races you might be leveling? Or is it purely, no, these are just the two expansions, it doesn't matter what I level? For leveling, I've always kind of gone for speed slash comfort, I would say, and... Mm -hmm. In theory, they're going to try to balance the pace of all of these expansions so that it doesn't matter which one you take, they're going to take approximately the same amount of time. And I think it's going to be kind of a discovery process to figure out, given that, if they really are similar in pace, then what's the comfiest one to level through? Because before, I've always just opt chosen for zones that are faster. And I don't. Maybe that maybe there are other areas that I would really enjoy questing through if they matched in speed. You know, I never really hmm. quest in Pandaria much because I feel like it's just a little bit. It's very, it's very fragmented. There's like lots and lots of little places and lots of travel time. But if it takes about the same amount of time, I might be down. It's gorgeous, gorgeous zones. Mm. And there's also, I think, the later zones in every expansion that you never go to anymore. Like, when was the last time you leveled in the Twilight Highlands? Yeah, very true. Fair point. So it might be interesting to revisit those again and discover if we avoided them because they were just at the end or if we were glad to get out of there before we had to go there. Yeah, no, that, that will be very interesting. I think uh, it will be, for, I think for me, very cool to see where people level and just their experiences. Um, but it does sound like Shadowlands is going to be that expansion that maybe, I don't want to sound too snarky, but it, it, it seems to promise a lot. Mm -hmm. Do you think that it might be under a lot of pressure to um, provide to the masses? Yeah, because I think that over the last, like, three expansions, there's always been press about WoW and there's always been bad press and good press, but I think mm -hmm. the last four years and the rise of um, algorithmically driven user user provided content like that you see on YouTube and the kind of things that you see on Twitch, our overall media landscape rewards clickbait and it rewards sensationalism so much more now that there's just this giant vortex of hate about it because that's what gets clicks. That's what gets ultimately revenue for content creators. And I think that's kind of started to feed on itself into this like big you know, whirlwind of bad press about BFA, some of which was absolutely warranted, but they've kind of put it in this place now where investors are going to expect people to get happier and they're not gonna really care how you do it. So there was a lot of pressure on Shadowlands to not be another BFA, but I don't know if anybody that is really I don't know if any, like, if you took 10 people that all, like, really, really hate BFA and then you sat them down to make a list of why, I don't think those lists, they're going to be valid reasons, but I don't think they're necessarily going to match up on every point um, mm -hmm. or even most of them. There's a few sticking points that I think that Blizzard knows about that they won't be bringing forward, but a lot of people will disagree on why they didn't like it. Um, and they're just kind of left with this notion of, with this feeling of just general anti-Blizzard anger as opposed to constructive feelings about the game. Um, mm -hmm. So I think Shadowlands got a lot of pressure to fix a problem and I think it's very difficult because nobody really agrees on what they want it to fix. <laughs> um, people will have different ideas about that. So it's interesting to see how it goes. Um, I'm hoping, my dream is that everybody, and this is a little unrealistic, but I just hope that everybody can kind of chill a little bit <laughs> and just consume the content that they want to and play games that are fun for them. And I don't think that everybody must play WoW and be happy, but like you said, if you're not having fun, 
that's okay. That's not a political decision. You can take a break. You don't have to stick around. But I think that sticking around purely for the point of being angry about it is counterproductive for the people that are still enjoying it, that now feel bad about enjoying it because everybody's ragging on it. And it's also not really great for you. Um, so I just hope everybody can kind of find peace. Yeah. And, you know, I think I've never understood that, um, that whole concept of you don't like something then and i see this a lot in like facebook groups about the game mm -hmm. so you, you see people posting something and then i don't know why but there always has to be one person at least in that whole thread that has to say something about oh wow such a shit game why do you even still play it and i'm like why are you still in this group if you mm -hmm. hate it so much and i don't get it i don't get why people enjoy basically pooping on other people's parade um, I'm like yeah. I don't understand why you have to be negative but it does feel like you said you know it, it it's almost and I use quotation marks here cool to hate on things um, mm -hmm. which, which I think is a little bit sad really that we have to start doing that now yeah, yeah. I, I do get the the desire like for people that used to really love wow that are unhappy with the direction i understand the the unhappiness and i understand the desire to share constructive criticism about the thing that you love because that comes from a place of passion it's mm -hmm. more about like what you said where it becomes cool to hate on something that makes you part of a cultural movement and often it can be easier you know if you're feeling bad about something about yourself maybe not consciously it can make you feel better to find something and be like well at least i'm not doing as badly as this thing and then and then kind of piling on with everybody else yeah i guess you know in a way i'm also guilty of that because i do love watching love island just to make myself feel better <laughs> about how i'm doing in life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay um looking at a little bit at the story and where we are at um how do you feel about the the two factions now that there is and I use the term peace very loosely, mm -hmm. uh, but that we have a sort of peace. Uh, I think I'm just disappointed that we haven't seen any major or structural changes in them, like I was saying. I think that mm -hmm. we have had for so long this cycle of we're fighting and it's the world of Warcraft and we brought it back to its roots and now there's a bigger evil and we must band together to fight it and then now we're fighting. And we do that <laughs> over and over and over and over and over again. And I want somebody to just Daenerys Targaryen in here and break the wheel and just, you know, I, and, and we've had cinematics about this. We've had Anduin and Saurfang having conversations about how this is getting really old. And I think it needs to change somehow. And I just really hope that it does. I'm not even picky about the direction. I don't need the factions to be merged. I just think that that continuing cycling narrative is not as compelling as it used to be. And mm -hmm. it's only going to get thinner as it keeps repeating itself. So interested okay. to see where we go yeah that that would be very interesting because it feels like we're going against another big bad with um and i know that i'm probably you know seeing it very black and white with sylvanas um mm -hmm. and it, it probably has more to it uh, like blizzard tends to do at times uh, they don't give you the whole story just yet um but it does feel like we're like grouping up again to to fight some big evil and where does it lead us in the end? Mm -hmm. um, do you feel like, you know, there was, there was a lot of back and forth talk with people saying that it's nonsense to have factions. Why do we even have war in Warcraft? It's unnecessary. And then there is also a, a very big group of people that say, no, it's all about the factions. Uh, we should just be at war again. I don't understand why we're being all hippie and lovey-dovey. And how do you feel about all of that? I, th I think there's something to be said for the concept that faction conflict is core to World of Warcraft. Like you look at the you look at where it came from and, and orcs and humans, and that's really where it all started. So mm -hmm. I understand why the devs have said um, in presentations and whatnot about how they don't want to let go of that two faction setup because it's important to it's important to the the soul and the essence of the game. Mm -hmm. um, I think that gameplay wise, war mode I feel like solves that perfectly because it means that if you want to if you want to be at war, then go for it. And if you're not in the mood, then that's fine too. Um, and I don't know. We've seen raids where we're working together, and then we've seen raids that are the total opposite, like Battle of Dazar Lore, where we raid different versions of it depending on our faction. And mm -hmm. I don't think either one is necessarily the right answer. Um, I'm not overly concerned about it either way. Okay. 
Now, a completely different question, um, and everyone responds to it a little bit different. Um, and, and I'm wondering, for you as a content creator, um, not just as a content creator, but also as just you, as Hazel, what has the Warcraft community meant to you personally? That's a that's a, that's a heavy one, and I think it is mm. for a lot of people because it's it sounds very cheesy and like a sappy overstatement to say that it's everything. But it really, in my case, it really is quite true because I, um, as I mentioned, I immigrated about seven years ago and I've been effectively working from home ever since then. So I don't have a real life social circle. I'm not really ingrained in any actual IRL social fabric. So the World of Warcraft community and the friends that I make in the game and the friends that I make on my stream are my entire contact with the outside world. It's everything that I have. And mm -hmm. it, the my... I've for a long time um, managed varying levels of um, social anxiety and the WoW gives me the ability to kind of stay at home and take it at my own pace. And if there's days where I'm feeling more adventurous, I can do more things with other people and connect and have conversations. And if there's days where I'm not up to it, you can appear offline and then just go do your own thing. Mm -hmm. And giving us the control like that is really, really, really important. And I think the WoW community is it's everything because um, because everybody's just we're all kind of here for for ourselves but also for each other which sounds like I'm saying nothing but I also I think at least the WoW community that I deal with particularly in my streams we're not perfect people I'm not a perfect person I don't think anybody is but we do I think a really good job of admiring each other and bringing the best versions of ourselves to spend time with each other and that's something that I don't think I really get anywhere else. I feel like everybody's kind of doing their best for everybody else. And you end up with this really beautiful thing where people are helpful and people are warm and friendly and welcoming. And you finally have a place to belong after so many years of feeling like you were never going to have that. Yeah, and I think that's, that's a very beautiful way of saying it. Have you ever been completely blown away by um, individuals in the, in the WoW community who've done something that you were like, wow... I'd never expected anyone to be like this this nice or, or that it got quite, um, I, I don't want to say emotional, but you know what I mean? Just that you got all the feels from it. Um, every, so I, this isn't necessarily directly from the WoW community, it's more of a content creation thing, but mm -hmm. every now and then somebody will write me a letter and like a, like a, with, with a pen and some paper and then they'll mail Aww. it. And that gets me every time because nobody writes letters. We all have computers. <laughs> and for the fact that somebody had something they wanted to say to me, and it's so far all been very nice. And they, they actually took the time to like sit down and put it to paper and then buy stamps and, and actually send it to me. It just melts my heart every single time because that's the sweetest thing I've ever heard. Um, within WoW, I think it's more things about people just going out of their way to help other people while they're going about their own day. You know, people that will buff each other waiting for bosses and people that will, you know, invite new players to their Mythic Plus group and, and kind of walk everybody through things for the first time. Um, mm -hmm. The WoW community can feel kind of elitist sometimes, depending on which, which circles you're running in. If you're just in LFG all the time, you might get kind of overwhelmed by all the Raider IO <laughs> going around. <laughs> so seeing people I think seeing people that are willing to help new players, um, even when I'm not part of the equation at all, is also a really heartwarming thing because it would be very easy for us all to just kind of go about our own day and get our own our own things done in WoW and it would be much faster that way, but um, the community is not always like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, wow, I'm just still reading by that, by that letter um, thing. That's really, really nice. I like that. Okay, Hazel, this is, mm -hmm. this is a bit of a weird question. Mm. What's your favorite in-game food? I miss bear tartare so much. <laughs> um, I, I I really do. It's uh, it, it's it's gone. I mean, it's not gone now. It's just been it's just been nerfed. But I I used to I used to go on bear hunting Sunday afternoons, and I would just <laughs> massacre bears out in Stormheim, and then just send stacks to all of my alts, and they all had it in a special spot in their bags, and they would eat some before doing their mount runs and. It's just, it's gone now. I'll, there'll never be another food that really just moves my heart like bear tartare because it was so <laughs> useful. And uh, and nothing else, nothing else really does it for me the same way. 
<laughs> Fair enough. Okay, Hazel, we're coming to the last question of the podcast, which is um, the weird one, and I always explain it to everyone. It's my failed experiment question, um, mm. which is, uh, what is your whisper? And a whisper can be anything, really. Anything that you want to say about, uh, about the game. So... I've been on this rant before, and I think I'm gonna I'm gonna moderate it a little bit, <laughs> make okay. it a little bit more accessible to the universe because, you know, I didn't I didn't get my dream last time. Not that I really expect to. I <laughs> want, and this is a little out of left field. I want rated PvP to be much easier to set up new characters for. I want them to break down as many barriers to entry for a character to get into rated PvP as they can um, or as they're willing to right mm. now if you if you got a character let's say they're already leveled you've done that part you've decided i want to be a mistweaver monk in arena and you've already got your 120 you still need to do so many things to get that character off the ground you need to do so much gameplay that is not arena to get started that if your goal is arena and you weren't in that character for any other reason you're not gonna do it and those two styles of gameplay pve and pvp are so fundamentally different that if you don't, if, if you if you if you only use a character for one, you're not gonna really. It's it's so hard to get it set up for that without dabbling mm -hmm. a little bit in the other one. So, I like if 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 it was up to me, I would separate WoW rated esports out completely into like a separate client where you make um, template characters, and maybe you can save like your transmog and whatnot. But I would completely separate it from the MMO grind of the game. I know that's um, a little harsh and a little much for most people, so I'll take whatever I can get. I would take <laughs> PvP vendors, but the fact that I would right now have to do so much PvE on a character to get it set up to Q3s completely mm. prohibits, prohibits me from doing so because I don't have that much time for it. And if I was going to dedicate a couple of hours a week to trying to PvP, I want to spend that time practicing and being told how bad I am. I don't want to spend that time going and doing my cloaks and assaults and horrific visions because that's not what I wanted to do with that character and it drives me batty. <laughs> uh, so just, you know, there's already enough barriers to entry. I don't think solo queue is necessarily the answer. I think that we're always going to have to struggle with finding partners on our level. And that's hard enough without also having to set up your essences and your Azerite and your cloak and, and, and going and getting your best trinkets and now your best corruptions. And it's too much. And I want... All of it gone. <laughs> if I had my way. That's my way. I think that's actually a very... I never thought of it like that. But yeah. Because I, I do remember... Um, oh god, was that in Wrath? When we had PvP vendors? Um, we've had them much more recently. It was We've had them in Warlords. We had them to some extent in Legion. Um, I think Warlords was the last time I remember true PvP vendors. Mm -hmm. And I, I will never get over... <laughs> I will never get over there, the, the new system. I just, they, the principles of the PVP gearing system right now are, it's kind of this mix of guaranteed gear from doing your conquest gearing, but then combined with um, random gearing. And that would have been kind of sort of okay if it were not for all of these other mechanics you have to keep up with now, and then corruption on top of that. I don't even mm. know how you're supposed to fit corruption into that. You have to do PVE if you're going to be competitive in PvP these days. It's just uh, silly. Sounds very counterproductive, really, for what you want to do. Yeah, mm. that that's that's a good point. I never really thought about that, so we'll see what Shadowlands brings with that. Hopefully, uh, hopefully they listen. Okay, Hazel, thank you so much for being an amazing guest. Um, I'm still a bit fangirling over here. Um, and I, I just, I know this sounds really stupid, but I just want to say from me and my guild, thank you so much for your amazing... Um, raid videos because they help out a lot um, and I'm sure it's not just my guild but many other people out there who are trying to raid um, it's it's great to have really good guides out there and it's just easy to follow and, and you know I think it's there's not too much stuff that is being said just you know you, you go to the core and I think that really helps with a lot of people um, I can say for myself, it has helped me a lot with helping with raiding. Of course, my guild still has to carry me because I'm such a shit, <laughs> shit rogue. But, but other than that, you know, at least I don't die on, on, on weird things. Thanks to you. So thank you uh, uh, for doing everything that you do in the community. And thank you so much for being a wonderful guest. Oh, you make me blush. Thanks for having me <laughs> and for watching and all that good stuff. 
Absolutely. And if people want to find all your things on the internet, how can they get in touch with you? Where can they find you? Uh, Hazelnutty Games. I am Hazelnutty Games on YouTube. I am Hazelnutty Games on Twitch. Those are the important ones where I make, uh, well, I, good content's a stretch, but content where I try. Um, I'm also Hazelnutty Games on Twitter and then Hazelnutty Life on Instagram. But uh, yeah, we stream six days a week. We do a little, little bite-sized two-hour stream six days a week and then videos at least once a week. But whenever I can, whenever I can crank them out, I try my best. <laughs> okay, perfect. And I'll make sure that that gets all put in the show notes. And thank you again. Thank you. So I hope you enjoyed that interview. It was lovely talking to Hazel. And make sure, if you haven't followed her yet, which would really surprise me, um, that you check out her YouTube channel, of course, because there's some really amazing guides in there. Especially if you want to get that long boy now. So, um, yeah, maybe you should look into that before it's gone forever. Anyhow, let's go to the things that you guys do at the moment, because um, I think I might have dropped it several times. Uh, there's a little bit of a lull at the moment. Of course, you can still be raiding Nyalotha or, you know, you might want to get all your essences. Um, but there's a bit of time now in between 8.3 and the new expansion. So I wanted to know what you guys are doing in game and what your favorite thing is to do at the moment. Uh, and this is what you guys said. So the crosshair said, I don't play currently or anymore. But it would probably be the same as last empty expansions. A leveling and gearing alts and doing old content drops for transmogs. That's not a bad thing. I think a lot of people um, are in that same boat um, if they do play. So yeah, that's, that's I think a very um, sensible thing to do. Or just something that a lot of people are doing at the moment. Uh, Tim said, my most favorite thing is making characters, leveling them and do transmog runs. Currently playing classic while waiting for Shadowlands. That's not a bad idea actually to do a bit of classic now. Um, I guess we have some time. So yeah, maybe I should also start diving a little bit back into classic. The only thing is, you know, my guild's not there. So I'd miss talking to them. Um, Alex C said, I'll probably fill my time with weekly guild raiding, Mythic Plus and some PvP. Eventually I might try some achievement hunting and might go for Lore Master. Overall, being part of Do Not Relent Pod keeps me interested in the game indefinitely, it seems. Yeah, podcasting does help. It does help. <laughs> Nick Z said, my favorite thing to do is raid, but I haven't had time for that in a while. Still hanging out on Mechagon to get those last few achievements. Hoping to get that and be onto something else well before the expansion hits. Dalek Kupo said, exploring and going back to old zones I struggled with and destroying them. Currently I'm trying to get a Hortoon, the same eye level as my Alliance main for Shadowlands. Ooh, does that mean that you... Um, I hope you're not leaving uh, uh, the Alliance side though, uh, Dalek Kupo, uh, and that you're also... You know, level both maybe for Shadowlands. That would be a cool thing. Uh, Professor Talib said, We are leveling Volpira, spending lots of time in Pandaria. Where else? <laughs> of course, of course. I do want to go back to Pandaria. And I, you know, I can't wait for Shadowlands that we can actually level in the entire continent. And not just be done with a few, few zones. Um, Clanker said, I can't pick one. New characters plus finding the perfect transmog to tell, uh, to tell their story, questing lore and reading every single quest item description, etc. Raiding and playing with, uh, with awesome people and finding the perfect spot to just enjoy the world and look out over the zone. That actually sounds like a very chill way of, um, of playing the game. I like it. I like that. And, and a lot of ideas for people who, you know, only raids. Maybe there's some other stuff you could do. Um, People of Azeroth uh, said, Wow, classic hardcore challenge. <laughs> oh, mate, I, I don't know how you do it. Honestly, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> Scrubs vs. The World said, I am keeping up with dailies and working on my cloak. I'm having a lot of fun just flying around and looking at things while I knock out world quests. I'm also Teemok farming for cool looks for my shaman. Ooh, nice. You need to post some pictures uh, on, on my, uh, my, my Twitter because I want to see some, uh, some of your combinations and outfits that you've made for your shaman. Uh, Chad said, my favorite thing in game is doing visions for my cloak upgrades. It is a great challenge for an old tryhard like myself. I've actually been thinking about streaming my trials and tribulations. Um, I would. Why not? Try it. Uh, that could be really fun. 
Um, Ali said, I'm doing a lot of raiding. Right now, my favorite thing to do is horrific visions. Though putting on music, podcasts or Netflix while knocking out dailies can be relaxing for me. And I think it's all about sometimes relaxing, isn't it? Because do we really want to make this a second job? I really don't. Um, Baron's chat said, in times like these, I always like to go back and do the meta achievements from past... Uh, expansions, dungeons and raids that give you a mount. Now would be a good time to go back and grab the legions ones if you didn't grab them then. That is a really, really good idea actually. So um, yeah, I might. Um, and somebody said go to bed. <laughs> that's, that's also not a bad idea, you know, catch up on some sleep. That's um, probably good to get your rest before Shadowlands hits. So yeah, you guys responded so much i have another question for you guys uh coming up so i'll post that after i have this show up so keep an eye out on twitter as well uh to be part of the conversation i'm also recording the first round table this weekend which is going to be a lot of fun uh, so i will put another question of the week up for that as well so you guys are going to be so busy because you know i do put all my faith in you guys to answer um <laughs> so that's all of it anyhow i think the show has been going on for quite a while now so i will leave you with all the things where you can find me um go to whispersofwar.podbean.com if you want to see the show notes all the shows and all that fun stuff go to dragonpoweredstudio.com forward slash discord if you want to be part of our gaming uh, weeks or weekdays and evenings we game a lot together um, if you want to be part of the conversations that we have for the different podcasts or just you know want to get some free games which we always make people aware of and of course, you can follow the questions of the week and all my uploads on Twitter. Go to at whispers underscore of underscore war or my personal one, which is McMonkeys with a Z. The email for the show is whispersofwarpodcast um, whispers at gmail.com. This is how often I use that email. Um, Twitch, <laughs> twitch.tv forward slash McMonkeys with two Zs. And uh, that is it, people. Thank you so much for listening to the show, for downloading, of course, and for sharing uh, and for just participating. I really, really appreciate it. And yeah, I, hopefully this cold will, will go. I hope I don't sound too crap. Um, I think I sound a bit husky. So <laughs> hopefully, you know, I don't sound horrible uh, in coming from your earpods. So yeah, have a wonderful week in World of Warcraft. Um, stay safe. Uh, I hope that uh, you and yours are all you know, safe with what's going on. Uh, don't buy bog roll in bulk. Uh, you know, think of your fellow man <laughs> who also needs it. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll see you all next week. Bye bye. This show is brought to you by Dragon Powered Studio. Find more at dragonpoweredstudio.com.